Welcome to the lecture on solving formulas for a specified variable. A formula, or sometimes it's called a literal equation, is basically a relationship between measurements. A lot of the common formulas that you learn in science and mathematics are things that we're going to be working with today. Occasionally, when you have one of these formulas, it's going to be necessary to take the formula and rearrange it so that it's solved for a different variable. For example, in number one here, we've got the volume formula of a cone, V equals one-third pi r squared h. Right now, this is being solved for V, and what we want to do is solve for h instead. So we want to rearrange our variables so that it's in terms of h and not in terms of V. So what we're going to do is look at how we could solve this to isolate h and get h by itself. Now the first issue that we have is a fraction, this one-third, and I like to clear out fractions first, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to look for all my denominators, and in this case the only denominator I have is three, and I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by three. As long as you do it to both sides, you're keeping the equation balanced. On the left side, three times v gives me three v, and on the right side, the sole reason we chose 3 is so that 3 and 1 third would cancel out. So all we're going to have left is pi r squared h. Now to finish isolating for h, we want to get rid of the pi r squared that's in front of it, and those are being multiplied by the h. So to undo them, we can divide. So we're going to divide both sides by pi r squared. So that gives us h equals 3v over pi r squared, and we are finished. For the next example, we have the formula p equals a plus b plus c, and we want to solve this for b. So here's my b, and I want to isolate it by getting rid of any terms next to it, so I need to move the a and the c over to the other side. Now you can do this simultaneously in this case, both a and c are being added to the b, so we can subtract both of them to the other side. Now on the left side, P, A, and C, these are not like terms, so I can't really do anything with them other than writing them side by side. So P minus A minus C. On the right hand side, the A's cancel out, the C's cancel out, and we just have our B. And B is solved for, so we're finished. On the next example, we have a very common formula that you might have seen in a science course. This is your temperature conversion formula to take a degree, a temperature in Celsius, and change it into Fahrenheit. So what we want to do instead is solve this for Celsius instead, solve for C. So the first thing that we want to do again is probably clear out any fractions that we see. In this case, the denominator that I have is 5, so I am going to multiply both sides by 5. So on the left side, 5 times f gives me 5f. On the right side, I want to make sure that I distribute that 5 across to both terms. So 9 fifths c times 5, the 5's are going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with the 9 and the c. So the denominator is gone. For the last term here, 32 times 5, that's 160. So all we've done so far is really cancel out our denominators to make the numbers a little bit easier to work with. Now to finish solving for C, we want to isolate the C, so I need to get rid of both the 9 and the 160, and I'm going to want to subtract 160 because it's furthest away from the C, so that's the one that I want to get rid of first. So I'm going to subtract 160 from both sides, That'll leave me with 5f minus 160 equals 9c. And finally, to finish isolating that c, I want to get rid of the 9, which is being multiplied. So to undo it, I'm going to divide by 9. Now on the left side, I'm going to do that by dividing this entire left side by 9. So c equals 5f minus 160 all over 9 and there's my solution. Okay, For example 4, what we have is the area of a trapezoid formula, one half the height times base 1 plus base 2, or little b plus big b. 
we want to solve this for little b. And right now, little b is inside of these parentheses. So we have two issues. We've got that fraction again, that 2 in the denominator that we probably want to clear out. And then we also need to get rid of these parentheses so that we can get at our little b. So the first thing I'm going to do is clear out that fraction of 2 by multiplying both sides by 2. On the left side, that gives me 2a. And on the right side, the 2's will cancel out, and all I will have left is that numerator, little h, parentheses, little b, plus big B. Now to get at that little b, I am going to probably want to get rid of these parentheses. There are other ways to solve this. You could, for example, divide both sides by h, but I prefer to distribute across, so I'm going to choose to take h times little b and h times big B. So I'll get 2a equals h little b plus h big B. So again, we're working to solve for little b, so the next thing I'd want to do is get rid of the term farthest away from it, which is this plus hb, so I'm going to want to subtract that to the other side, and that'll give me 2a minus h little b equals h, excuse me, h big b equals h little b, and to finish solving for little b, I'm going to divide both sides by h. Now you have two options here. One option is just like I've done here, little b equals 2a minus hb all over little h. So you get a big fraction for an answer. As another option, at this step, I could have, instead of dividing the entire left side by h, I could have divided every single term by h. And what that does for me is it still gives me little b, but it gives me a slightly different looking answer. I'm going to get 2a over h minus, and then on this fraction, since I have a little h on the top and on the bottom, they would cancel out, so I just get minus big b. Both of these answers are correct, they just have a different form to them. So you want to make sure you know how to do it both ways so that you can um, compare answers. Okay, in our next example, we have surface area of a rectangular prism. So what we want to do here is solve this equation, this formula, for w. Now this example is a little bit different than the last ones because in this example we have two w's showing up. So we're going to have to deal with that issue a little bit later, but first we want to isolate these w terms as much as possible, and since 2LH doesn't have a w in its term, we want to move that to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 2LH to the left side. So on the left side I have A minus 2LH equals 2HW plus 2LW. So we have the W terms on one side and the non-W terms on the other side. Now here's where the new step comes in. Since I have two W's and I want to isolate W and get W equals to something else, we need to kind of consolidate these two W's down to one. And the way to do that is to factor, oops, factor out W from the right hand side. We're going to treat it kind of like a greatest common factor. Now notice here all I'm factoring out is just the W and when I do that I'm going to be left with a 2H plus 2L. If I was really factoring out a greatest common factor I probably would have pulled the 2 out as well. But I'm not doing that here because we don't want to solve for 2W, we want to solve for just W. So I'm going to choose to leave the 2's inside the parentheses. Now once we factor out our w, your last step will always to be to divide by what's in parentheses. So we're going to divide both sides by 2h plus 2l. So we get w equals a minus 2lh all over 2h plus 2l. Okay, let's try that again. Next example here, example 6, we want to solve this for h. 
there's an H here and an H here. So again, we see two H's in the original problem. So whenever you have more than one variable showing up that you're trying to solve for, that implies that we're probably going to have to do that factoring towards the end of our solution. Now before I can get to factoring though, we want to get our H terms on one side and all of our other terms on the other side. So to get at this H inside the parentheses, we're going to need to undo our parentheses by distributing A across. So let's start there. We get A times B minus A times H minus HM equals R. Now this term has an H and this term has an H, so I'm going to leave those where they are and move the AB term over to the right side. Right now AB is positive, so I want to subtract it to undo it. So these will cancel out and I'm left with negative AH minus HM equals R minus AB. Now we have our H terms on one side, the non-H terms on the other side, so this is going to be where we factor. So I pull out my H in parentheses. We're going to write what's left over, which in this case would be negative A minus M. Then our last step is to divide by what's in parentheses. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative A minus M. So H equals R minus AB all over negative A minus M. Now technically we're done, this is our answer. However, the solution that we got probably isn't the most cleaned up solution that we could give. There's quite a few negatives involved. So one thing we often do is try to eliminate as many negatives as possible, which we can do by multiplying the top by negative one and the bottom by negative one. Now negative one over negative one is just a fancy one, so we're not changing the original fraction as long as we do the same thing to the top that we also do to the bottom. So if we multiply through by these negatives, that's just going to result in changing all the signs that we have in the original problem. So positive R becomes negative R, negative AB becomes positive AB, and the denominator becomes positive A plus M. Now that also is a correct answer. However, just to show you one more thing we probably would do, Leading off with a negative, again, is not always the cleanest looking solution. So what I'm going to do here to finish this off is switch the order around between these top two terms, which I can do because addition is commutative. The order doesn't matter. So I'm going to put the AB first, then my minus R, all over A plus M. So this is what I would consider to be the cleanest looking solution. Okay, our last example. We want to solve for C. We've got a C on the left side and a C on the right side inside of those parentheses. So we have two C's. That means we're probably going to need to factor eventually. Before I do, I want to get at that C in those parentheses, so I'm going to distribute my A across. So the left side stays put, AX minus 4C. The right side becomes AC minus AD plus that 3. Now I have several C terms. I have this C and this C, and I want to get them together on the same side. And I want to try to get as many positives as I can, so my choice here would be to add 4C to the right side so that it's a positive term. So on the left side, all I'll have is that AX. On the right side, I'll have the original AC from up here, I'm going to squeeze in that plus 4C that we just added in, and then I still have my minus AD, and I still have my plus 3. Now these two terms are the C terms. The other two over here don't have C's, so I want to move those over to the left side by doing their opposites. So I am going to add AD to the left side, and at the same time I'm going to subtract 3. So the left side becomes AX plus AD minus 3 equals AC plus 4C. So now we have our C's on the right and everything else on the left. Since we have our C's together on the right side, now is where we're going to factor out C. So C parentheses, what's left over would be A plus 4. So we factored out C, 
And our last step is going to be to divide by what's in parentheses. So if I divide both sides by a plus 4, then I get my final solution, c equals ax plus ad minus 3 all over a plus 4. And just a quick note here, be careful, it's tempting to want to cancel out some a's or something over on this left side, but since every single term, including the 3 and the 4, do not have a's, we're not allowed to do any canceling. So this is as simplified as our answer can get. Alright, that concludes our lecture on solving formulas for a specified variable. Good luck.